The next item of business is consideration of business motion 2456 in the name of George Adam on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out changes to today's business. Any member who wishes to speak against the motion should press their request to speak button now. I call on George Adam to move the motion. Thank you, President Officer, and moved. No member is asked to speak against the motion, therefore the question is that motion 2456 be agreed. Are we all agreed? The motion is therefore agreed. The next item of business is topical questions. In order to get in as many people as possible, I would prefer short and succinct questions and responses. And I call it question number one, Jamie Green. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what resilience measures are in place to tackle serious organised crime and terrorism in light of reports that the Assistant Chief Constable in charge has been suspended. Cabinet Secretary Keith Brown. This is an operational matter for Police Scotland. The Chief Constable has confirmed that Assistant Chief Constable Tim Mayers will move from his current role on an interim basis to take responsibility for the organised crime, counter-terrorism and intelligence portfolio. The member will appreciate that it would not be appropriate for me to comment further while an investigation is underway. Jamie Green. I do appreciate there is an investigation underway. However, it is the seniority of the individual and indeed the importance of his remit which causes the most concern. The Assistant Chief Constable suspended leads the charge in tackling serious organised crime, terrorism and cybercrime in Scotland. We know that cybercrime increased 95 per cent last year. Web-based grooming offences have increased by 80 per cent over five years and the police are currently investigating nearly two and a half thousand serious organised uh, gang members in Scotland. So can I ask if the Cabinet Secretary is confident that we are making progress in tackling these crimes and what steps has he personally taken in the past two, uh, few days to make sure that these recent events will in no way impact Police Scotland's ability to protect the public? Cabinet Secretary. Well, as I say, President, there's not much I can say in terms of the actual investigation. And just as the member says, it's very important uh, because of the level of the person involved, uh, involved in terms of the organisation. It would be just as important for a member at any level in the organisation this um, kind of case. And it is the responsibility of the Chief Constable to deploy his force as he sees fit. I have had discussions in the last few days both with the police themselves and with the SPA, and I am confident that the police and the Chief Constable will ensure that the same kind of uh, coverage, the same kind of uh, effort has been made in relation to organised crime, uh, cyber crime, as was being made before this case came to fruition, and that will be affected by the changes which the Chief Constable has put in place. Jamie Green. Uh, I am reassured, in a sense, that a conversation has taken place about the resilience of the police's ability uh, to handle such serious crime in Scotland. But it, Let's not forget, presiding officer, it's been over a year since Dame Angelini's final report into police misconduct and complaints handling was published. The government, I remember, snuck out a progress report on the final day before summer recess. I raised it as an issue at the time, but we've heard nothing since. It remains a fact that, astonishingly, an officer can resign while suspended during an investigation with no further action or recourse taken whatsoever. Why is this still the case? Cabinet Secretary. Well, that's a very important point that Jamie Green makes. He knows it was one of the recommendations uh, in Dame Ailish Angelini's report. He'll know there were over 100 such recommendations, many of which have been progressed. And just to reassure the member, a meeting took place last week at which the latest tranche of recommendations which have been progressed uh, were summarised and will shortly make a statement, um, uh, make public uh, the progress that's been made throughout the range of recommendations. The one that uh, the member refers to, of course, is one that would require primary legislation to change. And it is a question that we will have to take forward that and perhaps another provision which is in relation to advisory uh, and barred lists whereby somebody convicted of offence in one police force can't join another police force without that police force being told about it. So those are on their own two very important recommendations, but they will require primary legislation and if we take them forward will require to be fitted into the legislative programme just to say that justice currently has around 22 bills scheduled for this parliament alone before any bills which the member might bring forward and others so it is a congested program but we do intend to take that forward seriously and serious progress has been made throughout the uh, recommendations that Ailish Angelini has made. Holly McNeill. Thank you. Can I thank the cabinet secretary for that information? 
uh, Cabinet Secretary will be aware that there has been an 18-fold increase in stoppages of so-called street volume in the space of a year, while seizures of psychoactive substances have nearly doubled. Um, I would just like a further assurance that the Cabinet Secretary will be mindful that the successful work does continue and is not compromised in any way. Cabinet Secretary. I would want to give the member that reassurance, and the reassurance is based on the um, 17,000 police officers which we have in place, uh, and also the work that's been done through some new initiatives. Psychoactive drugs were mentioned by the members, and she'll be aware of some of the things which have been done in relation to the presence of those drugs in prisons. Uh, but she'll also be aware of recent changes by the Lord Advocate in relation to uh, how these uh, dr uh, drug um, offences are prosecuted and dealt with by the police. So yes, there is a real focus on this, and of course it should not be the case necessarily that the discovery of an increased uh, amount of drugs is necessarily seen uh, as increased prevalence. It may well be due, and, we, and I'm not saying it is, we can't properly determine exactly what it's due to, but it may well be down to the fact that the police are acting very effectively to locate and seize these drugs as well. Audrey Nicholl. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what it is doing to strengthen the process for the handling of complaints and misconduct allegations against police officers. Cabinet Secretary. Hey, can I thank the member for the question? See, I have partly answered it, I think, in response to Jamie Green's uh, supplementary question. But following the review, which is mentioned, it was mentioned before by Dame Ailish Angelini, uh, which was into complaints handling, investigations and misconduct issues, a number of recommendations have already been implemented. Others, as I have said, will require legislation and will consult on those proposals further to further strengthen the framework for complaints and misconduct allegations against police officers. And we will do that next year, including the conduct framework for senior officers. There is, though, currently an established process for the handling of police complaints, investigations of serious incidents and misconduct, and I welcome the significant progress which has been made by, amongst others, the Police Scotland, the SPA, the Police Investigations and Review Commissioner, the Crown Office and the Procurator Fiscal Service to drive improvements in systems and processes in advance of those legislative changes which I mentioned earlier. Question number two, Daniel Johnson. <clears throat> to ask the Scottish Government what support it is providing NHS Lothian and other NHS boards, given the consequences and impact of delayed discharges. Cabinet Secretary, Hamza Youssef. I thank the member for a very uh, important question. The health and care system is under extreme pressure due to the pandemic, and all health boards are experiencing significant issues, including workforce challenges and high levels of delayed discharge. To help alleviate some of that pressure, we announced a substantial new package of the over £300 million in hospital and community care to support NHS and social care systems over this winter, a substantial proportion of that funding going directly into social care to help with delayed discharge. I also announced last month further funding of £10 million to support health boards maintain resilience throughout winter by putting in place a range of measures, including appropriate levels of staffing at the right place at the right time. I have been meeting with the Chief Executive of NHS Lothian alongside the Chief Executive of the City of Edinburgh Council and uh, Judith Proctor and the team at the Edinburgh Health and Social Care Partnership uh, as well on a weekly basis for the last month to discuss this very issue. Daniel Johnson. Um, I thank the Cabinet Secretary uh, for that answer and I will be very measured in my question because myself and others in the Chamber today were at a briefing on Friday which painted a, a, an alarming uh, picture where there has clearly been a spike in delayed discharge, particularly in Edinburgh, leading to a log jam right the way through inpatient care and into accident emergency. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, have uh, in his meetings they identified what the issue is, because my understanding is it's not necessarily just one of money. Um, uh, is this about social care provision or are there other blockages to discharge? And is this an issue that's happening elsewhere in the country? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I can thank uh, Daniel Johnson and of course if he wants further briefing then, then this topical uh, question necessarily will allow then I'm happy to speak to him uh, offline uh, with my officials in detail. In terms of the questions uh, he asks there are some Edinburgh specific issues uh, that's why I meet with Edinburgh every single week because I'm really concerned about the level of delayed discharge the highest in the country but also the very unique circumstances so for example there is a severe lack of in-house provision as he probably knows not just in care homes but of course care at home which is a vital part of keep, keeping people uh, out of hospital, be it via uh, out, out of the back door or indeed preventing them coming through uh, the front door. Workforce is clearly a challenge uh, as well in Edinburgh, given that uh, there are other competing uh, workforce pressures and hospitality and so on and so forth. Um, but he is absolutely right that finances, I have said to Edinburgh City Council, to the Health and Social Care Partnership and to Lothian Health Board, should not be an issue. In fact, I agreed additional funding 
recognising that, for example, for interim care placements in Edinburgh, the cost may well be higher in Edinburgh than it would be in other parts of the country. Uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm convinced and content that funding isn't uh, the issue as he articulates, uh, but there are a significant number of other issues that we're trying to work through uh, with Edinburgh. And given uh, the time that I have here in Topicals, uh, I'm happy to, to either write to the member or if he wants a meeting, I'm more than happy to discuss these in greater detail. Daniel Johnson. Uh, indeed, I, I would welcome uh, more detail and a meeting. A, a particular concern is inpatient care and particularly within trauma. Uh, one particular example is the orthopaedics where delays in treatment can obviously have consequences in terms of uh, bone growth and, and so on. Is there a particular concern in particular areas of inpatient care and would be able to elaborate that and what action is being taken to remove those issues? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, we have, I mean, we have concerns uh, right across uh, the board, but he's absolutely right to focus on uh, the areas that he, he does. Uh, what I would say is really important is we can often uh, spend a lot of time in this chamber, understandably so, uh, focused on unscheduled care, the emergency care, but actually elective care. We know there has been a building backlog uh, due and exacerbated certainly by the significant impact of the pandemic. And what we're doing is trying to use all the resources possible nationally. So taking, for example, the likes of the Golden Jubilee, how can the Golden Jubilee help with orthopaedic surgery, uh, be it in Lothian, be it in the West Coast or indeed any other part of the country. So we're trying to maximise as much uh, resources as we can to help uh, with, with, with the elective, elective backlog because we know the longer people have to wait uh, for that surgery, it builds up problems for us in the future. But again, I'm more than happy to go into more details uh, with Daniel Johnson at a meeting. Sandesh Gohani. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. You have announced money for delayed discharges uh, and agreed in your previous answer uh, that money doesn't necessarily seem to be the problem. Uh, so my question is when do you expect to help more long-suffering patients receive the care they need and deserve by reducing the current level of hospital delayed discharges? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, so, so, so as reduce, reducing in the last week's figures, uh, we, we, we have gone below uh, 1,500. Still far too high. Uh, and I wanted to reduce uh, even, even more. So I'm happy to provide uh, Sandish Gohani uh, with the latest figures. But I would say that we are beginning to see small levels of reduction, but I need that to be far bigger than it is. So I'm meeting with uh, the health boards, the six health boards that have the largest number uh, of delayed discharges and we're working through uh, solutions uh, and we're making some uh, progress as I say but uh, I would hope that progress continues and as I have said to Daniel Johnson and I've made it clear to the health boards that funding and finances uh, shouldn't be the barrier uh, to helping to reduce those delayed discharges. Christine Graham. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I also attended the briefings on Friday with NHS Lothian, and then I went on to one with NHS Borders. So further to the answers to Daniel Johnson, it's not just an Edinburgh problem. Figures for beds as of today at the Borders General Hospital are out of 300 beds. Seven are occupied by COVID patients, but 51 by those whose discharge is delayed. Now, while appreciating the various causes of this, losing 17% of bed capacity with all the predictable challenges this winter lie ahead, we have an immediate problem. Can I ask, and listen carefully to the Cabinet Secretary's answer, if he's also meeting with Ralph Roberts, Rafe Roberts of um, NHS Borders, because it's also a problem in the borders. Uh, yes, you can imagine I discuss this issue with every single uh, health board. Of course, Christian Graham is, is absolutely right. It's a problem uh, that every health board uh, contends with. There's also areas of very, very good practice, uh, which I'm uh, ensuring is shared right across uh, every single uh, health board. But Christian Graham, uh, as always, gets to the, the crux of the issue here, which is, of course, if we invest uh, not just in, in, in care home uh, placements, which are hugely important, but care at home and making sure people have the appropriate packages at home, we hopefully prevent them coming through the front door of the hospital uh, too. So, uh, yes, uh, to give her an assurance, uh, I meet with uh, the chief execs, the chairs, uh, every single week. Uh, of course, uh, Rafe Roberts is on those calls, uh, and we discuss these matters in, in, in great detail. Martin Whitfield. I'm very grateful, Presiding Officer, and I'm very grateful for the answers that we've heard today. Following the meeting on Friday, can the Cabinet Secretary say where the staff are going to come from that are needed to alleviate this problem across Scotland? Uh, so recruitment is underway, is going well. Uh, job adverts uh, are not just out, but interviews are commencing and a number of people have already been recruited. I did reference in my question, uh, sorry, my answer to Daniel Johnson, that Edinburgh does have an acute problem because there's a number of other pressures uh, that, that, that are upon them from uh, the retail sector, from uh, hospitality and so on and so forth. But uh, some of the £300 million of funding that I announced, uh, of course, uh, a bulk of that, uh, a significant proportion of that was for additional recruitment of band twos uh, to force that work is very well 
uh, underway, and I'm happy if the member wishes to write to me if he wants more specific detail uh, on recruitment. I'm happy to provide uh, the numbers to Stephen Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary uh, if you will tell us how many people are now waiting in Scotland for a hospital appointment, given the comments he's made in relation to capacity within the system? Cabinet Secretary. I don't have the figures uh, to hand in terms of exactly how many are waiting for an, a hospital uh, appointment, but I'm happy to look to see if uh, we have those figures and provide them uh, to Stephen Kerr. Uh, what I would say is we're investing heavily to try to free up as much capacity as we possibly can, delayed discharge and freeing up uh, those delayed, uh, getting those delayed discharges back out and those people back out into community is going to help us to free up space within the hospital, see more people, which is important. But also, of course, our investment in primary care is really, really important for that because we don't want everybody to just have to go into a hospital to be seen, uh, where they can be seen in the community, where they can be seen at primary care, uh, is why we're making investment right across the entire system. But for the exact figures that uh, Mr Kerr is looking for, I'm more than happy to see if they can be provided to him. Thank you. That concludes topical questions.